Here we are at Hackett Hut. Brain cancer, which got her yesterday. Look how beautiful this is. Third house shelter. Oh, you're alive. Let me check. Well, good morning, folks. So I'm at the start of what is called the Hackett Track, and um, I've got a rather ambitious goal today, which I'll fill you in it. Um, but right now we are at Hackett Track Car Park. Um, we're going to be in approximately an hour or so at the intersection of the Hackett Hut and Browning. I'm going to through to Browning Hut, which should be in around about uh, two and a half hours. And then I'm going to head off to this track, which is the TRR Trail, to Rocks Hut. Hopefully, all things going well, I will be there at the quickest in six hours time. And then I'm going to shoot off um, over the back. Currently, it is um, 7.30. It gets dark tonight at 7.30 p.m. Um, so I've got... 12 hours to get this thing done. Catch you on track now. Coming up on the chromite loop, um, this was a, an old mining spot. Um, we can't go to Whispering Falls because it apparently is closed. Um, so I'm heading up towards approximately um, the Hackett Hut. We're coming up the Hackett Creek, um, just left the Hackett car park. The next intersection I come to is the Whispering Falls. Um, pretty amazing waterfalls. I've seen uh, photos of it. Um, I won't be going up there because uh, there's a dock warning saying don't. From there we're going to come up on to the intersection where uh, you veer off right to Hackett Hut. I'll make a decision in terms of how I'm feeling as to whether or not I'll shoot off for that. I think that's 1.3 kilometers. Uh, to the hut and then back onto Browning track. So the car park was 120 meters um, and Browning hut I think is something like about 480. So what's that 360 meters of elevation um, over what should be around about two, two and a half hours but that's if you're not hanging around filming. So well this could be either a very optimistic mission or epic one of the two <laughs> so when I use the plan my route um, app for the first time so that I could um, send copies of those to my wife and to my contact here in Nelson um, it sort of put what I'm going to try to do today at uh, 31 kilometers um, and just reading about the total distance it could be a little bit more like 39 so that would officially be the furthest I think I've ever hiked in a day officially um, so that um, it sort of works out at around about 11 hours um, if you were to go by the dock times and uh, that's not including filming and things like that so as I go along um, I'm going to make some decisions um, like um, I should be at Browning Hut um, in around about two two and a half hours uh, Browning Hut is at an elevation of 480 meters uh, the car park is something like about 120 so we're doing 360 meters of elevation climbing so it's nice gradual climb to uh, warm my muscles up into it 
uh, to get them ready for what could be 31 to 39 kilometers later. So be sure to keep on watching and we'll see what pans out. The next decision point will be Rock's Hut and in theory if you weren't stopping to film that's um, according to Doc around about six hours away and of course once I get to there then that's either my turnaround point um, it's my crash point if the weather packs up but it, it's meant to be pretty good today or um, I'm going to carry on down to Brook Street which allegedly is about another four four and a half hours from there so we'll see how my body holds up to this isn't that stunning this is the Hackett Creek Valley um, we'll see how my body holds up I think the weather's going to be fine and uh, we'll go from there alright so Whispering Falls is 30 minutes that way um, I'm heading off to Hackett Hut intersection if Doc say you're not supposed to go to Whispering Falls then I won't do that because this YouTube channel is about promoting the right thing to do um, on conservation land so carry on with me up to the intersection of Hackett Hut and um, what will be Browning Track Oh, this is tough. Hackett Hut is 15 minutes. You know, I'm a bit of a hut bagger. 15 minutes away and then it comes back onto the track. Never been here before, so and I'm unlikely to come again. I better go off and do it. Hackett Hut, 900 metres. Let's just add that on too, shall we? Browning Hut, an hour 30 from here, if you cut across this way. But for now, we're going to head up the hill and check out the Hackett. Oh, she's a bit of a steep climb up. Honestly, what an awesome piece of forestry this is. So, uh, I think this is a bit of a new bypass. It'd be awesome for the mountain bikers. This isn't overly clear. I'm going to head this way and look for an orange marker. Anyway, so I'm going to get off now and check my navigator, make sure I'm not going the wrong way. Behind me, if we went right, we head up into the forest. So, yeah, that's why it's really important to have these navigators. Now, I use a Topo 50 on an app called Toastmaster. Check it out. It's only about six dollars to purchase it for each island. So originally um, when I was coming to plan to do this hike I was actually going to go to Starvel Hut but um, when I rang Doc up about how to get out from the western side I guess um, I thought you'd come down um, like a forestry road and they said well actually you're not allowed to because it's private land so I abandoned that it would have been probably only about a six to eight hour day and uh, that's why I decided to come uh, this way right through rocks and then down to Brook. So uh, Starville Hut, we'll just have to uh, wait for another time. But that's uh, four and a half hours away from this intersection. For now, we're just heading across to Hackett. Here we are at Hackett Hut. Uh, the time currently is 10 past 9. I've faffed around for about half an hour with a mic and battery and talking with Josh and some bits and pieces. So I'm going to sort of call the start of the track 8 o'clock, not 7.30. Um, and given that it's 10 past 9 now, I'm, I'm probably about bang on. I estimated around about an hour to get to um, Hackett Hut. So um, plenty of places to camp. Uh, there's an awesome bush just before here that you could camp in. I see someone had a 
fire going there. Uh, the water is obviously on the bridge where I've just come from. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Okay, so we're at an elevation of 270. Oh yeah. Oh, this is lovely. I will uh, fill that in shortly. So this should be a six bunker, two, four, six, and wood fire. Oh, I just love, just love these kind of help. Okay, so I'm just going to fill the intention book in now, and um, we'll uh, head back out and then head towards Browning Hut. Catch you soon now. Long drop over here. Um, just not going to faff around with the dunny shot today. Hey, look, what a great little hut. Um, so that's really just taken about an hour. What a great place if you're just starting out hiking and wanting an easy place to overnight. Um, an hour from the car park. Bring a tent, plenty of tent sites, and uh, come and cut your teeth on this. Um, otherwise, you could head off to Browning Hut. So, Browning Hut apparently is just over an hour away. We should be coming up on the intersection if you'd continued straight through on that Browning track. So we're still an hour away to Browning Hut. The road end is that way. Having done that, I'm actually very pleased that I did that little side track off to Hackett Hut. Um, if you don't know me by now, um, I just love adventure. I have a curious spirit. And uh, yes, as much as I'd love to have gone and checked out Whisper Falls, you're just not allowed to. So um, to walk past Hackett Hut, um, well, that just would have done my head in. So I think it's probably worth the extra maybe half hour from this point. It looks like we're going to be heading up to 480 metres of elevation. To Browning Hut, 3.4k away, one hour. Let's do this. You know, with every river crossing, we actually do it three times. <laughs> this time you can come along with me. This is how we get our step count up. Okay, so that was a little confusing. Um, it says use the high track when it's been raining, the low track when it's not. I'm currently on the low track. When you see one of those large triangles, uh, that's generally a river crossing of some kind. Um, and uh, because I saw one of those, I knew that I just carried on up the river and uh, we'll eventually find another one. A little bit like here with the marker straight across there just makes it a little bit more scenic so persevere look around keep your wits about you and uh you'll be fine the pee waka waka and we're at the uh, high end now of that little diversion my little friend is following me and uh, it looks like we just keep following along. Alright, so we should actually be coming up on Browning Hut now. 
the time is 10.30 unlikely to be anybody here at this time of the day Alrighty, three hours to the road end uh, my time elapsed is actually three hours, but I don't know what that is. Let's see what happens. Oh, so what's happened is when I've put this down, it's created a sudden shock and my phone has sent an alert out to my wife. Um, Hackett was an hour 15, that's about right. I'm not going to Roebuck um, and we're heading off to Rocks Hut. So if I was to leave right now, I'm going to turn up at Rocks Hut at, um, well let's give it 20 minutes mucking around, so 11. So I'll be at Rocks Hut at 4 o'clock. So anyway, um, let's have a look at Browning Hut. We're in an altitude of 400 m. 80 meters. I think you can sort of get about 10 in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably squeeze in 10. A lovely little hut. And um, once again, I better find the intentions book and uh, fill this up. So, eight or 10 bunks, fireplace. These are fantastic huts. Honestly, you South Island Kiwis, not only have you got the mountains, you've got beautiful little huts as well. Good on you. So we're currently at Browning Hut at the moment. Um, look, uh, with the camera work and everything, um, at the moment it's 11 o'clock. No pen here, so it's actually um, something that I need to consider bringing every time so I can put my intentions in the hut book but um, I'm heading off to Rock's Hut now here's the big um, hike uh, so allegedly it's five hours currently it's 11 o'clock right well I better carry on and we'll show you a little bit more of the track um, and around about 20-40 minutes is um, the saddle uh, Totra saddle or something like that and uh, I'll probably come back to you then. If I can find some water on trail I will fill up my reservoir and my tin is filled up again and I've put some more electrolytes. I've taken on board um, uh, some chocolate and energy and I've taken a layer off so I'm currently down to um, like a wickering t-shirt and uh, this UV uh, hoodie uh, which I absolutely love because I can moderate um, my temperature by pulling the sleeves up and down. So anyway, let's get on and hurry up and get to Rock's Hut by four o'clock at the earliest. Looking forward to it. I suspect once I get up into the tops there's no water. Um, so I'm going to play it safe and carry three litres from this point. Um, yes, yeah, three k's, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. the bees buzzing in the top. We're in amongst a lovely beach forest at the moment. Now look, about 20 years ago um, I went on a solo hike and um, I played this little game called Stop, Look and Listen. For want of a better word, let's just say with a guide or infinite intelligence. Just to see what has been spoken 
to me about and um, he said look can you hear that buzzing in the trees and I said yeah I can and he said well your life is just like that you're so busy that your head is so buzzing that you just don't you don't hear me it was 20 years ago um, it was about the time that I started uh, my outdoor love of hiking because um, about that time I did Outward Bound and uh, sadly my life is probably still very busy but I've changed my priorities and it's about doing more of this and getting more balance rather than do I say it, wealth creation how lovely is this do you need to stop the buzzing in your head do you need to get outdoors on your own preferably just think and just let just let nature envelop you it's called bush bathing best therapy ever but I might add I'll add this too you know it's not so much that you need to get away from outside influences that should make you less anxious you need to learn to develop the ability to handle and like challenges and drama around you without getting too anxious um, that would be the measure of you to become more stoic to not get as excited or concerned or worried because you have a deep conviction and centeredness um, that allows you to cope. Alright, so just coming up on the intersection of the Polaris track and a rocks hut. So I think this is, yeah, this is all part of the TRR. See the symbol there? I think most of the tourists have uh, been through here by now. Rocks Hut is 4 hours 30 away um, we are going left, we're not doing the circuit um, that is something I thought about doing but it was just way too big a day yeah, Browning Hut, half an hour possibly is going down, it's 45 minutes coming up um, about 20 minutes from the hut was the first time I got some reception so I've sent a message off to my wife to tell her uh, that I'm approximately here um, and to let her know that I'm carrying on to rocks so I better keep moving I'm walking in between Totra Saddle and Rocks Hut um, in about a kilometre I'm coming up on to what is called point 906 and then beyond that um, is the highest point at about a thousand and ten metres or something like that I think it is anyway look I've been pretty quiet as I've just been absolutely um, enjoying this peaceful beach forest it is stunningly beautiful it is so gradual oh look we're getting some views today is Easter Friday and um, quite a dark day really because some 2000 plus years ago whether or not you want to call him a man, whether or not you want to call him a prophet, whether or not you want to call him Jesus, um, died on the cross and as a result of that we celebrate uh, Friday and Easter Monday. And if you don't believe in any of that then maybe you should go back to work on Friday and Monday. What do you reckon? Probably not, eh? So, um, over 2,000 years later, we are still talking about it. 
and um, I'm very much aware that it is a significant day and I am very grateful to have this day off. So talking about being grateful, it's not guaranteed <coughs> that we have a long life. Yesterday, on my wife's side, we lost an absolute light in our lives. Um, our auntie Karina died. Uh, she will be having, would have had her 61st birthday in April. Um, sadly, for the last 18 months, two years, she's been fighting a no-win battle with brain cancer, which got her yesterday. And when you read the comments about her, it's just, wow, what a woman, what a legacy that she left. And she touched so many people's lives. She lived a very unselfish life, dedicating it to the betterment of those people around her. And she's gone, and I don't understand why such beautiful people get taken so early. But she did. But the point of the matter is, there are no guarantees in life that we're going to have a long one. And in reading my Stoic book yesterday on the plane, um, a cartoonist came up with something that sounded a little bit like, oh, this must be point 906. Stunning. And I'll, I'll paraphrase it. This is the Outdoorsman Dave paraphrased version. Yesterday is gone. Learn from it and move on. Tomorrow hasn't come yet, so don't get anxious about it. Today is here right now, and that's why it's called a present. It's a gift. So use that gift. But it's a time to be grateful. Um, when you think that Karina didn't quite get to her 61st birthday. I am grateful that <clears throat> um, I have the ability to plan a trip like this, that I have the skill set to do the research, to determine uh, the distances and the times that um, today will encompass. I might be getting some of that wrong. But I'm grateful for that ability. I am grateful that um, it's calculated out to be something like 31 to 39 kilometers today and it will be something like about 11 hours. I am grateful that I have a spirit of courageousness that that doesn't daunt me and I am grateful for my physical health. Because if you don't have good health, what do you have? Lots of money in the bank? Well, that's only going to get spent getting you better. I am grateful that I have an amazing wife. Amazing wife. Of many years. Otherwise you'd work out how old I am. That plans these trips. That books the air flights. There's nothing in New Zealand bush that I believe can kill you, other than stupidity. I'm grateful for New Zealand. I am grateful for this country. And if you haven't been to New Zealand, you know, I encourage you to come along. Live today. Live life well. Because today is the gift. Today is why they call it present. So, if you're out there grumbling and mumbling, 
can I suggest to you as an exercise every morning before you go to work to write down three things that you're grateful for could be anything you're grateful for the fact that you've got running water that you've got electricity maybe that the government is subsidizing your accommodation write down why you are grateful and that'll start your day off a lot better that and a bit of black coffee anyway let's uh, carry on off to this point and um, enjoy this beautiful stunning countryside Well guys, we are at uh, the highest point of this route at the moment, so uh, the peak peak which is just up there, currently sitting at around about 1010 metres at the moment, uh, now given that we came up in the car park at 120, uh, so I've climbed 900 and it's been easy, it's been really easy. But in theory, in theory, it's all downhill from here. So cheers. Here's to getting to the summit of today's hike without very little trouble. So what did I say the time was? So five and a half hours. So in theory, I could actually be bang on halfway. If you've been listening and watching so far, then I do thank you for your patience. And this is a channel where you'll learn stuff from and you'll gain insight into the different layers of who Outdoorsman Dave is. So it's not just a case of entertaining you. This is a life channel, really. And hopefully I can inspire you to do things like this, to think um, a little differently, have some aspirations. So I'm going to get into my OSM chocolate bar and get some energy for lunchtime, which is 2 o'clock. Don't go away now. Oh, I should say, if you haven't done so already, then you know what to do. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and you know what i love to have your comments so i like to be able to interact uh, with my clients with my followers um, if it's constructive criticism i don't mind that if you're just giving it a go because you're a keyboard warrior well you need to go back to uh, saying three things that you're grateful for this morning and then have another go at writing that i'll catch you around soon now eh? Nothing. No people. No noise. Just nature. Don't you just love it?
always amazes me how you just come up on the huts at the last moment. So here we are, Rock's Hut. Now this one's a biggie. Just come from Browning. I would be very surprised if nobody's here actually. Have a look. Apparently it's ten past four. Hello. Too many bunks. Got the fire. And there's a flushing toilet somewhere. Now we all know outdoorsman Dave loves a good dunny shot, and apparently these dunnies are flushing toilets. You know, that's pretty impressive for a standard hut. How amazing is that? Okay, so I'm at Rock's Hut. Look out is 10 minutes up, 10 minutes down, 20 minutes out of my day. So I probably did not do that. It's um, currently 4.26 and I've got a, allegedly another five and a half hours to go. In 10 o'clock I'll be out. It's uh, as dark at 7.30. So what's that? Two and a half hours at torchlight. So I better not go up to the lookout. <laughs> As soon as I get some reception, I better let my darling know that um, I'm coming up 9.30, 10 o'clock. Don't think it'll be five and a half hours though. That's what Doc do just to scare people. Anyway, that was Rock's Hut. Uh, that was Francis that I met there. Uh, he's got an interesting story. He's a uh, bike ride up from Wellington. And uh, he tells me that he's staying at the hut just to get away from his flatmate. So I think that's pretty jolly impressive. <laughs> bike all the way from Wellington to come up to Rock's Hut just to get away from 15, 14 flatmates. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, and that's why I am grateful that I live in a lovely home and it's just me and my wife. But how amazing is this? It's a little bit like the car wreckers with all this gravel and so on. I bet you it snows through here during winter. Anyway, let's go and have a look at uh, Dun Saddle, shall we? So according to my navigator, I'm actually right on the saddle, if not a little bit to the right of it. Um, so yeah, I kind of hope, <laughs> kind of hope there's a sign just up here somewhere. Because um, if I carry on following this marker, I'm going to head over Dun Mountain, and I don't want to go right. I want to go left down the copper mine track. So I'm just going to keep following this marker and uh, get to the top here and you would think that there would be some kind of intersection sign give you some guidance you would think the sign up there we shall see all right so where i've come from that's my next destination, two and a half hours. It'll be dark by the time I get there, I might have to crash. And then four and a half hours. So it's 9, 10, 10 o'clock. Oh, a picnic table in the middle of nowhere, how no, random. Hey 
bartender. I'll have I'll have a cold glass of water with some electrolytes in it, please. And uh how about an Ovisimba? It is freezing up here. Okay, so I didn't really have any time to read those boards, but um we're walking on what used to be the copper mine tramway and um, now it's been converted to a mountain bike track. How amazing is that? This is the track here and you can see it running right around. Allegedly four and a half hours of it so I am more than comfortable to head out of this in pitch dark. See a sign! I see a sign! Oh, i got an hour and a half to go to the shelter, three and a half to Brook Street. Woohoo! Almost there. I'm having a deja vu moment. Oh, I'm also having a wonderful walk at a beautiful golden hour. 20 years ago, I came down to Nelson to do a two week course called Living Waters. Anybody else out there that's done that? And the teacher, a bit of a hard man, but a very gifted counsellor and very wise, a guy called David Riddell. Great name, David. Anyway, it was two weeks, and in the weekend in between, I went off with one of the ladies that was doing the course. She was going to Picton or something, and I asked if she could take me with her and drop me off on the other side of the Richmond Ranges and I remember hiking in on a metal road before we got into the forest I remember my first night was in some kind of tin dock shed um, I remember going past a hut where I, ha I was fasting, I decided to go two days uh, without eating any food <laughs> story of my life and uh, I was kind of told that that was a silly thing in terms of the guidance and uh, when I got to the, this hut there was someone left a, a full bar of white milky bar chocolate which just happened to be my favourite chocolate this is all coming back to me, I haven't thought of about this for 20 years anyway um, so there was a bit of a lesson to be learned there that just because that was something that I thought I should be doing wasn't necessarily the right thing for me to be doing that and and on the second day so that would be the Sunday it was a massive walk and um, which I did at night down a track that was just like this I mean there can't be too many tracks around like this and I remember coming up and up to a shelter a solid wooden shelter from memory it was a weird shape just these big solid bench seats and it was just all open so I wonder if that's third house shelter so remember me telling you right at the start of this video about how I was playing a game called Stop, Look and Listen. Well, it was that hiking trip. 
this is well before I got into hiking well before YouTube and uh, that's when I was sort of indicated that uh, the buzzing in my head needed to stop because I was just too busy but yeah I think 20 years later I'm on the same track it's a stunning track isn't it golden hour great time to be doing it too it's just such a stunning stunning area I mean look at this look how beautiful this is look how beautiful this is I'm just so full of joy right now deja vu in 25 minutes when we see the shells I'll know whether or not it's the same one Marilyn Monroe I guess we still remember and because you can't sing happy birthday very well will they remember outdoorsman Dave certainly going to be enough footage around but what have I done to contribute to society have I helped you at all have I helped or inspired you to get outdoors and to give it a go have I shown you that hey you can walk 40k on your own and it's completely okay you're safe here doing it have I inspired you to do that because if I have then then I have succeeded then I've achieved my mission so uh, thank you guys for the super thanks um, this is what it's um, allowed me to purchase so yeah now if anybody's out there that would want to sponsor some new trail shoes because <laughs> I really need some new trail shoes uh, then yeah at the bottom of this um, video in the comments is a thing called super thanks and no compulsion um, it's a very expensive thing to be doing this YouTube because you really just don't get any money from AdSense and um, I have things like this break on me all the time and now I need some new shoes so any sponsors out there please consider picking me up the trails and tracks you enjoy today are largely on the land that Thomas Cawthorn gifted to the Nelson City in 19 13. No, it's not quite what I remember. Well, maybe it is. These are solid wood planks. Oh my goodness, there's water here. I think it is. It is an unusual shape double-sided third house shelter what a cool chimney well i better go and find a sign and see how long i've got before i get out oh what does this say artmore memorial hut what a beautiful Legacy. Maybe I should build one. <laughs> anyway, I'm rabbiting now. So it's 9:40, and I'm coming out onto Brook Street. That's me, and my, and my ride is here, hallelujah, I've been saved. Oh, you're alive, let me check on you. Yeah, give me a hug. Oh, you must be tired, are you hungry? No. The, that's the end of an epic trip. There has to be a lot more than the 39 kilometers because um, 
this guy gave me a bum steer and I ended up um, off track. So um, it is currently 9.40, so that's a 14 hour day, probably a marathon, and I'm all okay and I've had a great time. So thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you on the next adventure. Outdoorsman Dave, over and out.